Uh, his fifth claim is that the diversity of views within the New Testament indicates that Jesus was not originally considered to be God in any sense at all. He eventually became divine for his followers in some sense be, before he came to uh, be thought of as equal with God Almighty in the absolute sense, right? So he, Jesus became God, and, and of course, this is one of his books. <laughs> right, right. Uh, so we covered this a, a little bit earlier, and uh, you can reference back to those uh, episodes. Uh, but when, once uh, the earliest written evidence we have for Christianity, the documents found in the New Testament are examined, it becomes apparent that the doctrinal core was used as standard against heresies in the earliest form of Christianity. So it's, it's always a, a point back of uh, this is what uh, we taught from Scripture. The Bereans, they, they checked their, their, their Bible at the time, which is the Old Testament. Uh, you have um, Paul ex, ex, extorting uh, the, uh, extolling the people that, uh, that he's taught. Like, have, don't you remember what I've taught you yeah. from the, the prophets and, and, and the apostles? This, go back to that. <laughs> Uh, and so um, uh, it should be also noted that, at least in part, that these works were distinguished from other non-canonical writings because of their early dates and connection with Jesus' original fathers, who in turn rooted the claim of Christianity and Jesus' fulfillment of Old Testament messianic predictions. And um, uh, G.K. Beale has a really good book about this of uh, the Old Testament in the New Testament, I believe it's called, mm. um, where he talks about um, the, the, the apostles' use of Old Testament scripture in the New Testament. It's really, really good. There, there's a longer version and a shorter version as well, as yeah. G.K. Bill usually does. So what they do G. next is kind of they give us a, a section uh, that kind of provide a, a small sampling of verses yeah that could be offered in response to Erdman's argument here. And so we'll just look at a couple mm -hmm. of them here. The first one is um, Matthew uh, 28, right? Uh, this is the uh, Great Commission. Jesus came near and said to them, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And here's the key issue here. Teaching them to observe everything I have commanded you. And remember... I am with you always to the end of the age. So the idea here is Jesus told his apostles, his disciples, to teach others what he told them, what he commanded them. Mm -hmm. right? So teach others what his teachings were. Right. So that's the key here. Right. And this isn't just twelve. This isn't just fifty. This this is a lot of people that yeah. he's that he's telling this to. Uh, while you have the the twelve that were intimate with Jesus that can provide uh, greater evidence and and explanation to. Uh, different teachings that Jesus had that that these 500 or so people heard. Um, uh, you have uh, the the Great Commission to all believers to do this, yeah, yeah. even from the foundation of uh, right before Jesus' own ascension. Right. Uh, and also in uh, in our uh, uh, book of Acts, Acts of the Apostles, Acts of the Holy Spirit, depending on which uh, frame of mind you want to take, uh, it says this, Acts 2, 42, and they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching the fellowship and to the breaking of bread and to prayers. So that's what the early church had done. Is, is right. So Jesus said, you know, teach them what I taught you. And so the church, the early church, devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching. Right? right. Jesus told them to teach, and they did teach, and that's what the church believed. Right. right? And they point back to saying, <clears throat> Jesus said, listen to us, and people did that. Yeah. Uh, first Timothy, uh, one, three. So we're getting into the new Testament uh, letters. This is from Paul, uh, where he says in one, three, uh, as I urged you when I went to Macedonia, remain in Ephesus so that you may instruct certain people not to teach different doctrine. So again, uh, if, if you can kind of teach whatever you want and be okay. And as long as I get my money full, uh, th that that's, that's ultimately what it's about, even though Paul works as a tent maker and works very sweatily and people steal his rags. All very rude stuff for, for a, a person who's making you a tent. <laughs> um, uh, he, he's, he's uh, again, uh, encouraging them to say, go back to what we originally taught because that was the truth that right. we're, we're trying to make true statements here. And um, it's things like sacrifice and love one another and, um, 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 uh, don't, uh, don't be an issue with, right. with, with the Romans. Uh, you don't be a, a rebel, you know, all, all those things that, that people just really ha hate to hear. Right. But mainly the gospel, right? That Jesus came, right. he was a and person, he, he died, he rose from the grave right. and that sort of thing. So notice what we have here. We have Jesus saying, look, I want you to teach people what I taught you. 
We have the early church following the teachings of the apostles. Mm. And we have Paul saying, don't teach anything different than what the apostles taught because that came from Jesus, right? right? right. So in these verses, they paint a different picture than Erdman's portrait of an early Christianity that lacked standards to distinguish the legitimate from false teaching, right? right? The legitimate is, what did Jesus say? How do we know what Jesus said? Because the apostles told us what Jesus said and the early church followed the teachings of the apostles. So instead, these passages reveal that the leaders of the church in the New Testament era, beginning with Jesus, appointment of 12 apostles, and on through Paul and early other uh, church leaders were instructed and sent out to pass on Jesus's message to subsequent generations, mm -hmm. right? So Jesus taught this. He taught this to his apostles. The church listened and learned from the apostles, and that's where we get Christianity from. It wasn't this, you know, Wild West show where everything could be believed and let's kind of pick the one we want. And since we have the most power, this will be orthodoxy. Mm -hmm. No, no, no. You go back to what Jesus said and what he taught his apostles. Right. And that, that's <clears throat> where you see, too, that there's no there's no kind of early pope. You know, you, you have James, who's leader of the the, the church in Jerusalem. Uh, uh, but, you know, it's it's uh, Peter going out, but then Paul comes in and says, uh, "Peter, why, why are you uh, only sitting with the Jews? The the <laughs> the Gentiles aren't uh, you know uh, 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 pox people anymore. Right. They're, they're, right. they're people that you can eat with. You're going back to the old ways." And he yeah. does it. Shame does, on you. He does it in yeah. person. To, he calls yeah, them and, out and right? calls them out. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And so it's in Galatians. <laughs> so so it, it it would be hard to say. Then uh, you know, well, we would see a more diverse teaching from all these different people, and so uh, that's why you, I think, you see people that want to want to pit James against uh, Paul, and you know, uh, P Paul says, you know, uh, uh, for by grace you have been saved through faith, and not of yourselves, uh, not of works, lest any man should boast. And then James talks about uh, uh, um, you, you claim to have uh, faith uh, without works; that faith is dead. I'll show you my faith by my works. And so uh, there's an explanation for that, meaning... Um, and we looked at this in faith, an earlier. In an we, we saw this evidence yeah. faith uh, um, um, in, in our uh, Keeping Faith in the Age of Reason, uh, and that link will be provided below. Uh, but you would see more diversity of that. If you can just haphazardly do whatever you want because you're, you're Paul or you're James or you're Jude or whatever it might be, you would see greater disagreements than, you know, the, the basic tenets of, of Christianity. Mm. Uh, and so, uh, none other than the Apostle Paul, the most towering figure of Christianity in its early stages, acknowledged that even he was not free to alter the core apostolic message. And, uh, so was, not only did he call Peter out, but he said, look, if, right? <laughs> right, it, it, yeah. Uh, he, he says this in Galatians, and this is one that I uh, tend to use uh, with, with Mormons as well. So to the Galatian church in one eight, he wrote, even if we, Paul and his fellow apostles, or an angel from heaven should preach to you a gospel other than what we have preached to you. It is a curse to him. Mm. And that's anathema. Yeah. He shall be damned. <laughs> so the, 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 he's, he's saying, look, if they preach another gospel, Jesus being the way, the truth, and the life, if they preach Jesus is a way, the truth, and the life, they've changed it so much that belief in that will damn them. Yeah, yeah. So notice the, the point here is that there was an original you know, uh, core belief, mm -hmm. and Paul is saying you need to stick to that. Right. right, right, and so, and this is an original, and this comes from Jesus, and uh, and is and and is what the apostles taught. So mm -hmm. that's where we get Christianity from. Right, it wasn't winner take all. Right, right, right. and uh, and this isn't Paul saying if if you don't listen to me, then I don't I don't get my comeuppance, I don't get my 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 piece of the action. And so, no, he's saying if if you don't believe this, which is Look at Jesus, not me, the chief of all sinners. Look at Jesus. You you won't be saved. I'm I'm teaching you what the gospel is as handed down to me by um, uh, by Jesus and the apostles. Um, and you know Paul has his assorted past of uh, you know being the persecutor and um, and he comes and and uh, studies uh, for at least three years and comes before uh, the the early church and they <coughs> hesitantly look at him but realize, okay, you, you have a calling from Jesus himself. And so um, that's uh, where, where even Paul gets his authority from. It's not himself, but uh, the, true, the true gospel. Uh, and to the Corinthian church, he wrote, Now, brothers, I want to clarify for you the gospel I proclaim to you. For I passed on to you the most important what I have also received, 
that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. Again, what's the scriptures at the time? The Old, Old Testament. Testament. Right. That he was buried and he was raised on the third day according to scriptures. <laughs> and that's from uh, 1 Corinthians 15, 1 and 3. And, you know, he, he talks about go to the... Go to these these all these different people who have witnessed it. They're out there. You can talk to them. And since we don't have that now, we have the documents that um, testify to that. So if not even Paul was able to alter the foundational message of Christianity, no one in the early church was allowed to tamper with the core teaching concerning the saving death, burial, and resurrection of, of the Lord Jesus Christ. In fact, again, going back to what, what uh, Paul called out Peter for, it was just the simple, hey, you're only eating with the Jews of the time. You're going back to these this old way of, of viewing um, the uncleanness of, of different types of people, uh, which was uh, 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 yeah, uh, or whatever food, right? Yeah. Right, a, a, a fulfillment of, of prophecy. This this is this was um, uh, Paul saying this is what would happen according to the Old Testament scriptures. We're going to be one people, um, and so uh, he's he's not pointing to you know you, you're going against my teaching. He's pointing them back to. Um, the uh, to, to, to the original um, proto gospel, mm-hmm. and then to the mm-hmm. the gospel in Jesus Christ Himself. In fact, the early church had always um, had ways to pass on what orthodoxy was all about, right? Um, even before there was a standard formal collection of New Testament writings, right? They use, for instance, the Hebrew Scriptures as their foundational text, mm-hmm. right? So, what were the Scriptures they were using? They were using the Hebrew. Scriptures. Yeah, right. th- there's a reason that Paul goes to the synagogues first whenever he goes into a new area, and then he goes out from there because the, the the Jews are the ones that are the kind of the keepers of the messianic tradition that will come about. And he's saying, "Hey, it's here. Let me tell you about it." And then from there, he goes out and sees sees what's going on. Good. Yeah, they used uh, information provided in doctrinal summaries to pass on core teachings. We find some of these examples, yeah. like in Romans. 1, 2 through 4, or 1 Corinthians 8, 4 through 6. Uh, numerous texts in the pastoral epistles, that sort of thing. They use um, hymns and liturgical portions to affirm uh, core doctrine. Colossians 1, for instance, 15 through 20. Um, Philippians 2, 6 through 11. Right. That's why they, they also think, too, that uh, um, the way that Matthew structures his uh, table of Jesus' descendants in this uh, three 14 uh, divisions, I believe it is, uh, is for kind of a, this uh, memorization, easy memorization. And uh, they use the sacramental rites of baptism and the Lord's Supper. Uh, they also taught key theologies. Right. right. <clears throat> so scripture, doctrinal summaries, singing, sacraments, all of these taught key doctrines in the core life and worship of the church long before the works of the New Testament were written. And they were used as authoritative, unified collections. So long before that happened, where these, where the New Testament was written, we have these various ways that allowed them to pass on what orthodoxy was. Mm-hmm. So, and you see this carried on from the tradition of of the Old Testament with the Psalms. The Psalms were sung. That's what Psalms are. Yeah. And so uh, we do that today. We do it with catechism. We do it with uh, you know the, the the different elements that uh, you probably have done in in your church as well. Um, I'm sure we all remember all the the lines the, the the songs that get in your head that you are hearing once your 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 kids are grown up and you you're <laughs> like oh, I remember that song now I won't be able to get you know, yeah, yeah out of my head yeah, for that's right it'll be in my head. <laughs> <laughs> Not that it's a bad thing because it's you know biblical. Yeah. <laughs> 